Unreal Engine 5 is quickly monopolizing the gaming industry, as many development teams are choosing to use Unreal 5 as their engine of choice to create their games. In just a few short years since its release, many high-profile games have come out using Unreal 5. Just this year, Tekken 8, Blacksmith Wukong, Silent Hill 2 Remake, Until Dawn Remake, and other games all run on Unreal 5. It makes sense so many dev teams use this engine, as there are incredible advantages for using UE5. However, like clockwork, after a UE5 game releases, there's inevitably going to be many videos detailing similar issues in almost every Unreal Engine 5 game. Stuttering problems, bad performance from demanding graphics and features, low internal resolution that is heavily upscaled, and many other optimization issues. Thus, I believe these problems, combined with the engine monopolizing the industry, is leading to a bleak future. But before moving on, the question must be asked, why use Unreal Engine 5 at all? Well, based off my research, there's a ton of advantages to using this engine over other game engines. First, it is extremely friendly and accessible to all kinds of game developers. Whether AAA or indie, it has features that are helpful for everyone. For example, some developers comment on how UE5 tools are so friendly towards game artists. Second, it has unique features that can streamline development. There's a reason so many developers use Unreal 5's features like Lumen or Nanite. These sorts of tools are incredibly helpful and efficient for developing aspects of the game, like lighting in Lumen's case. Facial animation technology is also becoming quite impressive as well. Moreover, it also has good features for multiplayer game development. Then there is always the potential future tools as well, as seen recently with Megalites, a new way to render shadow casting from every single light source. But most importantly, there are financial advantages to using Unreal Engine 5. Though you need to pay a royalty fee if you make over $1 million in revenue, the practical benefits far outweigh this cost. As previously mentioned, Unreal 5 is becoming the standard engine for many dev teams across the industry. That means developers being hired likely already know how to use Unreal 5, requiring far less training with the engine. Less training and quicker learning means lower cost. In a similar vein, when you have a unique or internal engine, the only way developers will be able to learn that engine is to be hired and be taught by that specific development team. This is likely the reason CD Projekt Red is using Unreal Engine 5 for Witcher 4, even though their internal engine, the Red Engine, is arguably better. If experienced developers leave the team, then teaching new hires is going to be very hard, especially if the devs left on the team do not know the engine as well as the experienced devs who left. If CD Projekt Red had a specific issue with their internal engine, they cannot go to anyone else to get the answer. Thus, Unreal Engine 5 is a great solution to all this. Though this is all great, this is creating a situation that is quite concerning. This is because in reality, Unreal Engine 5 has many problems. As I have mentioned many times, Unreal Engine 5 games rarely perform well on any platform. There are many reasons why performance issues are constantly a problem. First, there has been an ongoing problem with stuttering in Unreal 5 games. Though Epic knows of the issue, there is no widespread solution. A great example is the Until Dawn remake that just came out, which has stuttering issues all over the place. Until Epic resolves the stuttering problem or a development team finds a solution, the fact is most Unreal 5 games will have this issue. Until Dawn Remake is a great example where switching to Unreal Engine 5 over an internal engine is a big mistake. The original Until Dawn ran on the Decima engine, which runs the new Horizon Zero Dawn remaster and Forbidden West at 60 FPS with fantastic visual quality. If the Until Dawn remake used the Decima engine again, then it likely would have looked and performed much better. But they chose not to, because a new team was remaking Until Dawn. Because of this, Unreal Engine 5 makes sense. It's more mainstream and easier to learn. If they stuck with Decima, they probably would have needed to involve other development teams to help them, or at least teach them how the engine works. So, on paper, Unreal 5 seemed like the right solution, but the results show the opposite. Until Dawn Remake is capped at 30 FPS, does not perform well, and looks visually inferior to what the Decima engine can achieve. Second, there are Unreal Engine 5 features that are too demanding. Though not the only examples, the common ones are Nanite and Lumen. Lumen is Unreal 5's tool for lighting and reflections. It's incredibly useful as it provides dynamic real-time lighting and it looks very good. 
For example, you break open a window in Silent Hill 2, sunlight will flood in in real time. Nanite, on the other hand, is a level of detail system. It provides exactly the level of detail needed on an object, and theoretically allows for millions of poly models to be rendered effortlessly in real time. Both these features sound great, and both should allow for much better efficiency in the game development process. However, both these features end up having a high overhead cost, especially if both Lumen and Nanite are used together. In other words, using these demanding features result in games with poor performance, as current-gen consoles and most GPUs do not have enough power to adequately run those games with those features. To be clear, Nanite and Lumen's computational cost is justified. These features are so demanding because it takes a lot of computational power to run them. Thus, it does make sense that many Unreal Engine 5 games have performance issues because of this. Then of course there's the third reason, which are developers not optimizing their game well in Unreal Engine 5. Some evidence points to engine issues, like that stuttering problem previously mentioned, while others are developer issues. A common decision developers make is using a multitude of features that require too much computational power in exchange for far too little quality improvements. One example is the use of reflections. In 30 FPS quality modes, you may see ray traced or lumen technology, like in Silent Hill 2, which can be incredibly taxing on GPUs and consoles. Silent Hill 2 uses Lumen Global Illumination and Lumen Reflections. This makes sense as Silent Hill 2 and other quality modes only need to hit 30 FPS. However, switching over to performance mode shows the same Lumen Reflections and lighting being used. This is one example of many where instead of implementing separate features that use less graphical power in the performance mode, the devs instead opt to just use the same ones for both modes. There's a reason you never see performance modes hit 60 FPS, and this kind of decision making is exactly why. There's no reason we need to see lumen or ray traced reflections in a performance mode, but for the developers it's a lot simpler to just use the same features in both modes. Though the quality of reflections and lighting is lowered on performance mode, its result is nowhere close to 60 FPS. The true solution would be to implement a separate reflection or lighting technique that is less demanding, but that takes a lot more work by the developers, which is why it rarely happens. So what do developers actually do as a solution to make the game run better? Unfortunately, they all usually do the same thing. Lower the internal resolution, then upscale the image to make it look more presentable, which then causes visual issues and artifacts, like in Silent Hill 2 Remake. Even then, unstable performance is the norm in these games, and that's not good. What is truly concerning is that most dev teams encounter the same issues and provide the same solutions, like upscaling. Even Fortnite, Epic's own game, has stuttering issues. Thus, most of the time, Unreal Engine 5 and good performance do not go together. Before concluding this video, I have one last concern. As many turn to Unreal Engine 5 as their game engine of choice, it means there is a lack of competition, which is never great. Halo, Witcher 4, and Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake all switched to Unreal Engine 5 over their internal engines, and those are only the more recent examples. If there is no other engine meaningfully competing with Unreal Engine 5, then it means Epic does not really have to do much. Sure, they'll develop more tools and features, but it also means they do not need to immediately solve Unreal Engine 5's issues, since they don't need to worry about losing development teams to another engine. A monopoly is rarely good, and I can't see it being good here. One word comes to mind when I think of Unreal Engine 5 and Epic Games. Promises. Specifically, them over-promising. Unreal Engine 5 is supposed to be great for open-world games, but the only one there really is would be Fortnite, and that's arguable. We have not seen Unreal 5 open-world games because devs run into problems with stutter, like traversal stutter, which again, even happens on Fortnite. Nanite is supposed to actually be quicker at rendering and not use as much computational power, but right now that's often not the case. Megalites looks awesome, but the minute you use this with other Unreal Engine 5 tools that add to that overhead cost, what's going to happen to the game's performance? Unfortunately, Unreal Engine 5 so far has noticeable issues in almost all their games in some way. As games become more daring and better graphically, these current issues are likely going to be magnified unless solutions are figured out. 
And with the engine starting to monopolize the industry, these issues are going to be present in more and more games. And that is extremely concerning. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.